वेलकाम टू एन पी टी एल मुक्स कोर्स ऑन मेसिन लार्णिंग एंड डीप लार्णिंग फांडामेन्टेल्स एंड एप्लीकेशनस इन माई लास्ट क्लास आई डिसकस द फांडामेन्टेल कन्सेेप्ट अफ पार्जन उन्डो सो इन दार्जन उन्डो आई कन्सिडार द भल्यूम इज फिक्सड एंड उव काउंटेड द नम्बर अफ सेम्पल्स उद इन दिस पार्टिकुलर भल्यूम एंड बेस्ड ऑन दिस उन डिटारमाइन द डेन्सिटी द डेन्सिटी इज पी एन एक्स दैट इज द एन एट एस्टिमेट अफ द डेन्सिटी देर आर टू इशूज द वन इशू इज इफ द भल्यूम इज भेरि भेरि लार्ज दैट इज द भल्यूम इज भि एन इफ द भल्यूम इज भेरि भेरि लार्ज दैन द एस्टिमेट उल साफार फ्रम लेस रिजल्यूशन दैट इज द फार्ष्ट इश्यू द सेकेंड इश्यू इज इफ द भल्यूम इज भेरि भेरि स्मल दैन द एस्टिमेट उल साफार फ्रम स्टेटिस्टिकल भेरिएबिलिटी सो दिस टू इश्यूज आर भेरि इम्पर्टेन्ट नाउ सपोज एन इज भेरि भेरि हाई दैट इज द नम्बर अफ सेम्पल्स आर भेरि भेरि हाई दैन इन दिस केस द भल्यूम मे वि भेरि भेरि स्मल दैट मीन्स उद इन दिस स्मल भल्यूम उइ कैन एक्सपेक्ट दैट सम अफ द सेम्पल्स उइल फल इन दिस भल्यूम सो वेन एन टेन्स टू इनफिनिटी द भल्यूम मे वि भेरि भेरि स्मल सो दैट इज अनादार कन्सिडारेशन नाउ आई उल डिसकस द कन्सेप्ट अफ कन्भार्जेन्स उइ हेव डिटारमाइन द एन एट डेन्सिटी दैट इज द पी एन एक्स उइ हेव डिटारमाइन नाउ व्हाट आर द कंडिशन्स फर द कन्भार्जेन्स दैट इज द कन्भार्जेन्स फ्रम पी एन एक्स टू पी एक्स दैट इज द एक्सुअल डेन्सिटी सो देर आर टू कंडिशन्स वन इज द कन्भार्जेन्स अफ मीन एंड अनादार वन इज द कन्भार्जेन्स अफ भेरियन्स सो दिस टू कंडिशन्स उइ हेव टू कन्सिडार फर कन्भार्जेन्स अफ द एन एट एस्टिमेट अफ द डेन्सिटी टू द एक्सुअल डेन्सिटी द एक्सुअल डेन्सिटी इज पी एक्स सो लेट आस डिसकस एबाउट दिस कन्भार्जेन्स कंडिशन्स वन इज द कन्भार्जेन्स अफ द मीन एंड अनादार वन इज द कन्भार्जेन्स अफ भेरियन्स सो इन माई लास्ट क्लास आई डिसकस द कन्सेप्ट अफ पार्जन उन्डो सो इन दार्जन उन्डो उइ कैन डिटारमाइन द एन एट एस्टिमेट अफ द डेन्सिटी दैट इज द पी एन एक्स दैट इज एक्सुअलि द पी डी एफ द प्रबेबिलिटी डेन्सिटी फांगशन एट द पॉइंट द पॉइंट इज एक्स दैट इज इक्ल टू वन बै एन सामेशन आई इज इक्ल टू वन टू एन वन बै भि एन फाइ एक्स माइनास एक्स आई डिडेड बै एच एन सो इन माइ लास्ट क्लास आई डिसकस एबाउट दिस एंड उइ कन्सिडार द डेल्टा फांगशन द डेल्टा फांगशन इज डेल्टा एन एक्स दैट इज इक्ल टू वन बै भि एन फाइ एक्स बै एच एन सो उइ कन्सिडार ए डेल्टा फांगशन दैट इज दिस डेल्टा एन एक्स एक्सुअलि द मिनिंग इज द डेल्टा एन एक्स इज एक्सुअलि द इम्पल्स इम्पल्स एट द पॉइंट द पॉइंट इज एक्स सो द इम्पल्स सो बेस्ड ऑन दिस कंडिशन उइ कैन एक्सप्रेस द डेन्सिटी द डेन्सिटी इज इक्ल टू वन बै एन सामेशन आई इज इक्ल टू वन टू एन डेल्टा एन एक्स माइनास एक्स आई सो दिस इज द फर्मुला फर द डेन्सिटी द एस्टिमेटेड एन एट डेन्सिटी नाउ देर आर टू कंडिशन्स अलरेडी आई हेव एक्सप्लेन इफ द भल्यूम भि एन is very very small the, the volume vn tends to zero what will happen this estimated density the nth density that is nothing but the summation of summation of impulses at every sample points so actually that corresponds to that corresponds to mass statistical variability so this is the first case if vn tends to zero vn is very very small then the estimated density that is the summation of impulses at every sample point and the second case is if 
this volume V n is very high it tends to infinity very large. So, this P n x that is the estimated density. So, it will be a flat PDF flat PDF. So, already I told you it is nothing but the superposition of n number of slowly varying functions. So, that is why I am getting the flat PDF. So, that corresponds to less resolution. So, these are the two important cases that volume is very small and volume is very high. So, what we considered if n tends to infinity then volume may be very very small that we can consider because since n is very very high the number of samples uh, is very high then we can expect that some of the samples will fall in this small volume the volume is Vn. Now, let us discuss about the conditions for the convergence. Let us consider this nth estimate of the density has mean it has a mean the mean is represented by P n x bar and the variance sigma n square x. So, we are considering the mean is P n x bar and variance is sigma n square x. So, now this estimate that is the nth estimate converges to the actual density, actual density is p x. So, what are the conditions? The conditions is if limit n tends to infinity p n x that is the mean that will be equal to the actual density p x. So, that means what is the condition? the number of samples should be very very high. And if I consider n is very very high then corresponding to this condition n is very very high n tends to infinity then corresponding to these conditions the variance will be also 0 the variance will be 0. And also the supremum supremum phi u phi u is the window function that should be less than infinity the supremum of phi that should be less than infinity. So, what is actually the supremum? So, do you know what is the meaning of supremum? The supremum here I am writing supremum is actually it is a smallest number that is greater than or equal to every number in a set. So, this is the definition of supremum it is the smallest number that is greater than or equal to every number in a set. So, that is the definition of the supremum. So, I repeat this a supremum is the smallest upper bound on a set and also another condition is this limit V n, n is very very high n tends to infinity and corresponding to this the volume may be very very small and another condition is limit n V n because n is very very high n tends to infinity. So, this n v n will be equal to infinity. So, these are the conditions we are considering. So, that this nth estimate of the density converges to actual density the actual density is p x. So, now let us discuss about these conditions. So, there are two conditions already I have explained one is the convergence of the mean another one is the convergence of the variance. So, let us discuss about these conditions. So, first is the convergence of mean. 
So, this is the first condition, the convergence of the mean. So, we can determine the average density of uh, uh, P and X that is nothing but the expected value of the estimated density. So, if I take the average of this, I can determine the mean. So, it is equal to 1 by n summation i is equal to 1 to n expected value that is the average value 1 by v n phi x minus x i divided by h n. So, this is the mean and in this case what we have considered the delta function is this delta n x is nothing but 1 by v n phi x by h n. So, this is the delta function that is the impulse function and this expression I can write like this or integration 1 by v n phi x minus v, v is the volume h n and we are writing the density in terms of volume dv. So, this expression I can write like this and in terms of uh, this delta function. So, in terms of this delta function I can write this delta n x minus v, v is the volume the density in terms of volume dv. So, I can write like this. This is actually this rho v is nothing but this density x. So, if you see this expression, the expression is very important that is the uh, the mean we can determine like this. So, mean of the estimated density x minus v rho v. So, dv. So, this is the expression. So, this is one important expression. So, this expression you need to understand. So, this is the the average that is the, the mean we have determined. So, what is the interpretation of this expression? The interpretation of this expression is if you see this expression minutely you can see it is the convolution convolution of actual or unknown unknown density with the delta function. So, this expression is nothing but the convolution of the actual or the unknown density the density is p v with the delta function. So, that means in this case the mean actually this mean actually represents the blurred because we are taking the average. So, blurred version of the actual density the blurred version of the actual density. So, now let us discuss uh, what is the conditions for the convergence. So, let us move to the next slide. So, I am writing this equation again and that is the, the mean value of the estimated density I can write like this it is a delta function x minus v rho v dv. So, that is nothing but the convolution of the actual or the unknown density with the delta function. Now, when v n tends to 0 that is the volume approaches 0 then delta n x minus v that is the delta function the meaning will be this delta function delta function will be centered at x. So, if I consider v n tends to 0 then the delta function will be centered at x. So, that means I can say then this mean approaches the actual density p x as n tends to infinity n is very very high then 
this volume Vn may be very very small. So, one important thing is uh, that is if the n is very very high then we can consider a very small volume that means we can expect that some of the samples will fall in this small volume. So, you can see the conditions for the convergence the volume should be very very small and corresponding to this uh, this is the condition for the convergence. The one important thing is n need not be very high. So, I can say n need not be infinity, but the V n uh, tends to 0 the V n should be very very small. Now, let us discuss the second condition that is the convergence of the variance convergence of the variance. convergence of the variance. So, this variance this is the variance of variance of the estimated value of the density that is the nth estimate of the density. So, that is obtained like this. So, i is equal to 1 to n expected value so, from the definition of the variance we can determine like this expected value 1 by n v n phi x minus x i divided by h n minus 1 by n and this is the mean mean of the estimated density square so, you can see this is the expression for the, the variance. So, this expression I can write like this if I take n out from the summation sign i is equal to n expected value 1 by n square v n square pi square x minus x i h n minus 1 by n square p n square x and I can write like this. Now, let us consider this term. So, if I consider this term suppose this term I can write like this the star term I am showing this is 1 by n square v n I can write like this expected value 1 by v n phi x minus x i h n phi x minus x i h n like this I can put like this 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 position this star mark I am showing like this here. So, based on this uh, I can expand that variance the sigma n square is equal to n summation i is equal to 1 to n. So, 1 by v n phi x minus v h n phi x minus v h n one by n. So, after expansion I am getting this one. So, the next step is one by n v n I am taking it out the integration one by v n the phi is the window function x minus v h n phi x minus v h n p v d v minus 1 by n p n square x that is the, the mean p n square x. So, in this case what I am considering this term if I consider this term that I can consider as the supremum supremum of phi 
we can consider like this. So, that means we are dropping in this case, dropping the second term. Uh, in this case, how actually we obtain the dropping the second term, second term and using the equation, using the equation, what equation? So, equation already we know that is the mean of this estimated value of the density that is nothing but the delta n x minus v. So, we have derived this equation dv. So, by using this, uh, this we are getting uh, this one, this expression. So, now what is the conditions for the convergence? This variance sigma n square should be less than supremum of phi and the mean of p n x that is the mean value of the estimated density and v n. That means, what we are considering taking the maximum value maximum value of phi. So, that is the supremum we are considering. Now, what condition we need? The variance should be 0, the variance tends to 0, this is the required condition, this is the required condition. So, corresponding to this condition, what will be the case? N v n should be equal to infinity. So, this is the case. To get sigma n square tends to 0, the sigma n square that is the variance should be very very small the n v n should be equal to infinity. So, move to the next slide. So, uh, what we have considered? We have considered that this variance should be very very small, this is the condition and corresponding to this condition n v n should be equal to infinity, that is the condition. And again, the supremum of phi should be supremum of phi should be less than infinity. So, phi u that is the window function should be equal to 0 when u j tends to infinity. The supremum of phi should be infinity. So, these are two conditions and based on these two conditions you can see uh, we have obtained the condition. The condition is the convergence of the variance. So, this is about uh, the convergence, the one is the convergence of the mean and another one is the convergence of the variance corresponding to Parisian window. Now, let us discuss the second concept that is the k nearest neighbor concept, k n nearest neighbor technique. the k n nearest neighbor technique. So, what we have considered in the k n nearest neighbor technique? What we have fixed that k n is fixed and we are growing the volume so that it encloses k n number of samples. That means, what we have to determine find the volume find the volume v n which encloses k n number of samples. So, this k n is fixed, the number of sample is fixed and we have to grow the region, we have to increase the region so that this volume encloses the k n number of samples and based on this uh, we can determine the density. So, what is the estimate of the density? The nth estimate of the density is k n divided by n divided by v n. So, what is n? n is the total number of sample, k n is the number of samples within this volume, the volume is v n. So, this is actually the probability that the sample falls in a region, the region has a volume, the volume is v n. Now, this k n we can select like this k n is equal to root n that is actually data dependent way, data dependent way. 
So, k n is equal to root n and that is selected based on this data dependent way. So, based on this we can determine uh, that v n what is the volume. So, k n divided by n divided by density. So, from this expression we can determine the density. So, it is the expression is 1 by root n 1 by p n x that is the density. So, if you see this expression the v n is equal to so this is one important equation. So, v n is equal to 1 by root n into 1 by p n x. So, what is the interpretation of this equation? If the density of the training samples is high around the point x then the region will be small and vice versa. So, this is the concept of the density estimation by k nearest neighbor technique. So, what we have considered? So, we are considering the point x and we are considering the regions centered at x. So, that means I can say each region is centered about the point x that is actually in r to the power d space the d dimensional space. So, what we have to consider the size of the region is expanded until it encloses k n number of samples. So, I move to the next slide we have obtained the volume v n is equal to 1 by root n into 1 by p n x. So, if you see if the density of the training sample is very high around the point x the region will be very very small and vice versa. So, now you can see the size of the region the size of the region is expanded until it encloses k n number of samples k n number of samples. So, where k n is a function of n that is already I have explained actually the k n is equal to root n. So, then these samples are the k n nearest neighbor of the location x. So, I can write like this. So, these samples are then the k n nearest neighbor of the location x. So, these samples are then the k n nearest neighbor of the location x. Now, let us discuss how this k nearest neighbor technique can be employed for classification. So, in the base classification technique, so what we considered suppose this probability of omega i that is the class given x is greater than the probability of omega j given x. So, this is the condition we considered for classification. So, that means corresponding to this condition I have to select the class the class is omega i this class we have to select ok. So, now now how to write this probability of omega i given x I can write like this this probability of x omega i divided by the probability of x I can write like this. So, this can be written like this k i divided by n v n and this k by n v n. So, that is equal to k i divided by k. So, this actually this k is nothing but summation of all the k i's summation of all the k i's. So, this evidence p x the evidence p x so, it is nothing but 
the summation of probability of x given omega i. So, that is nothing but the summation of k i divided by n v n. So, this k i actually represents these are the training samples or these are the samples uh, corresponding to the class, the class is omega i. So, k i is the, the samples uh, corresponding to the class omega i and how many samples we are considering total number of sample is k. So, for all the classes if I do the summation of this k i's then I will be getting uh, the total value, the total value is k. So, k i is the sample corresponding to the class omega i. So, if you see in the base classification, we have considered this decision rule, if the probability of omega i given x is greater than probability of omega j given x, then in this case, I have to consider the class omega i. That means, the meaning is x is assigned to the class omega i. So, this is the case. And by using the base rule, we can write like this, the probability of omega i given x is equal to probability of x uh, given omega i divided by evidence. So, we are not considering that this prior information. So, probability of uh, x given omega i that I can write like this k i divided by n v n and this p x already I have shown it is nothing but the summation k i divided by n v n. So, that is nothing but the k n v n the p x I can determine like this. So, putting this value I will be getting this one and I will be getting finally k i divided by k. So, I am writing it again. So, what we have determined the probability of omega i given x is nothing but k i divided by k. So, that means the meaning is the fraction of samples in the region r with label omega i. So, that means the corresponding to the class omega i, my samples are k i. So, now if k i is greater than k j, then based on this we can take a classification decision that means we have to select the class. If the k i is greater than k j, then we can consider the x should be assigned to the class omega i. So, we can take a decision based on the voting process. So, based on the voting process, we can take a classification decision. So, how to do the, this voting, the voting process? Uh, that means, we have to count the k i's. The k i actually, it k i is the number of samples corresponding to the class omega i. And k j is the number of samples corresponding to the class omega j. So, if k i is greater than k j, then we have to select the class omega i. So, uh, this is the classification rule based on the k nearest neighbor technique. Now, mainly it is a voting process. So, let us discuss uh, how actually we can do the classification by considering this voting process. In this figure, you can see we are considering a new data point that is the blue color data point and I have two classes the class A and class B. So, in the first figure you can see I am considering a new data point. After this what we have to consider? We have to find the distance between the new data point and the corresponding the uh, samples of two classes. So, based on the nearest neighbor distance I can assign this new data sample to a particular class. So, here you can see in the figure 2 the new data point is assigned to the class omega 1 that is the category 1 the class A because the distance is minimum with respect to the category A that is the class A omega i. So, this class I can say it is omega i and this class I can say it is omega j two classes we are considering. So, this point is now assigned to the class omega i because the distance from this uh, new point to this samples of the class A is small as compared to the class B, the category B. So, let us see how actually we can do the voting. So, based on the voting, we can take a classification decision. So, here you can see in the first figure, 
we are considering uh, three classes one is the yellow one is the green and another one is the red so three classes we are considering and these are the samples of the classes three classes and we are considering a data point the new data point is the gray color so this is a gray color data point we are considering so corresponding to this point uh, this data point we are finding the distance between the samples so the first distance is 2.1 and another distance is 2.4 corresponding to the class the class is the yellow after this corresponding to the, this green the one nearest distance is 3.1 and corresponding to the this red class i can say the orange class the distance is uh, the 4.5 this is the nearest distance so after computing these distances you can see uh, the first distance the nearest neighbor distance is 2.1 so, 2.1 is the first nearest neighbor distance corresponding to the class yellow. Again, the second nearest neighbor distance is 2.4 corresponding to the class yellow. The third nearest neighbor is distance is 3.1 uh, corresponding to the class green. And the fourth nearest neighbor distance is 4.5 corresponding to the class red or the orange. So, in this case, you can see how many votes. I can give to the class yellow. So, because you can see two times uh, it is the nearest neighbor corresponding to the class yellow. So, that means the yellow class it will get the vote of 2 and the green class will get the vote of 1 and the red class it will get the vote of 1. So, that means that this new data point now will be assigned to the class the class is yellow. So, these three classes I can consider like this omega i omega z and omega k so that means this new data point is suppose x so now x will be assigned to the class omega i because uh, corresponding to this class omega i i will be getting the maximum number of vote maximum votes i will be getting because i have two votes corresponding to the class omega i and based on this this new data point x is assigned to the class the class is omega i that is the yellow class so this is the concept of the kn nearest neighbor algorithm for classification so we have to find the distances so that is why it is computationally complex because we have to find all the distances so that is why computationally it is more complex so in this figure also the same thing i have explained so you can see the new data point we are considering and we are considering two classes class a and class b so that is suppose omega i and this is suppose omega z and after this we are finding the distance in the second figure and after this we are counting number of votes so how many votes it is getting and based on this uh, based on this nearest neighbor i can decide the class the corresponding class so this is the concept of the k nearest neighbor classification so in this class i have explained uh, two important concepts one is the Persian window technique and another one is the k nearest neighbor technique in the Persian window technique we have considered the convergence of uh, mean and the convergence of variance these two important issues we have considered that means the convergence of the estimated value of the density that is the nth estimate of the density approaches the actual density actual density is px so for this we have considered the two cases one is the convergence of the mean another one is the convergence of the variance after this i have discussed uh, how to determine the density with the help of the k nearest neighbor technique in the k nearest neighbor technique we are fixing the number of samples that is the kn we are fixing and after this we are growing the region so that it encloses kn number of samples and based on this we can determine the density after this i discuss the concept of classification with the help of the k nearest neighbor technique so it is mainly the concept of voting and that means we can find the nearest neighbor based on the distance calculation and based on this we can take a classification decision this is about the persian window technique and the k nearest neighbor technique so let us stop here today thank you